Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Thursday. I'm Noel Ruiz, designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is Pedro Ruiz, my brother. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, the creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing designs featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. Each week we come here and share with you guys new projects that we're working on, combining 3D printing and DIY electronics. So. Give me a second here to figure out. Every week we Every have week we a have lovely segments, assortment yeah. of segments. This week the segments are hard to, to, to tackle, so let me tackle them. Gotcha. There you are. So every week we start off with uh, prototyping. And then layer by layer segment, which is uh, where we talk about CAD techniques. We get to share some cool tips and techniques, how we put together our lovely CAD stuff for 3D printing. Always cool tips in there. Oh, yeah. And then a Q&A. That's right. You guys got questions. We have answers. That's right. This week, more YouTube questions. Last week, we had Q&A, and this week, we have Q&A. Maybe every week, we'll start doing Q&A. Ask those questions away. Exactly. We'll save those them up. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. And then 3D news. We like to scour the news, the net for the news. Mainly, it's you know customer-created projects. We try to stay away from industry news, because there's other publications for that. But yeah, we'll talk a little bit about industry news. We've got a special one for you. It's more of a question but also news. And then we'll end the show off with our weekly video. Pedro, what's this week's video? That's right, this week, another cosplay one using wooden filament that we wow. just got in the shop. Whoa. Make Link's wooden this is, sword, this is so a pretty cool. sword. I love this thing. And it's actually really strong. We, we're gonna just try to do some strength tests because this thing is like... Sounds like wood, doesn't yeah, it? we're gonna make some wooden Sounds, instruments. It's like a block nice. of wood. <laughs> block of wood. All that and more on 3D Thursday. That's right, and... This week's coupon code is, of course, LINK from Zelda. That's right, in celebration of this week's project video. Get oh, yourself 10% yeah. off when you use the coupon code LINK during checkout. Get yourself some bamboo filament, some Ninja Flex, or, of course, one of the many 3D printers that can print this awesome project. That's right. So we're going to jump into um, our layer by layer segment. And Give me a second here. We're actually going to do a screencast of our, oh, look at that. Guess what this is, folks. This is the guide that I'm working on. This is what I've been working on for the past, I think, week now. Um, this is the guide for the Pocket Pie Girl project. Yeah. yeah, so some people ask, what's the workflow? How do you guys come out with a weekly video? Well, we have about a month of projects already in the works, which is why you see us promoting something for so long. It's because when we start off, Oh, and yeah. it just takes that long to get, you know, from the the learning guide to document everything, like taking photos, the videos, and as you've seen, it's not like a quick little thing that we do. Yeah, figuring we actually out spend all the a wrong ton stuff. of time of yeah, trying to get shots right, doing all the photography for it, and then of course sure. putting all that together. And before all of that, it takes about a month to just figure out how to get everything to work. And we also have to work in conjunction with Lamar releasing these new parts that you know that are used They're specific in all the projects. To the project, yeah. yeah. So none of these parts can actually exist until we have, you know, actual, you know, products being made, yeah. manufactured. Well, we this project. Um, the the Pi TFT was still a prototype. It was still purple from Osh Park, and um, actually Lamar actually had to build uh, a couple of them by hand so that we can have them and be able to to carry on with uh, building the project and getting the guide together. So in this guide, um, it goes through all the steps: 3D printing, the software, the circuit diagram. And then the wiring is broken out into different segments because there's so many parts. I wanted it to be a bit more consumable, right? Like adjustable. So you can, like the slide switch is all one section. The Power Boost 1000C is its own section. And it's broken up that way so that you can sort of take a break and, yeah, and so not, it's such a big project. Um, it's the working flow you have to do with such big projects because yeah. we know that a lot of newcomers are going to come in and not, you know, they're not going to know immediately, you know, that we already did this on a, you know, older episode. So we're going to have to, you know, Re, um, reteach them all yeah. these things that we've uh, taught before. Yep, yep. So, been chugging through that. Um, most of it's pretty much complete. Um, we just got to go through and, and sort of find final check everything. Um, you know, double check all the grammar and spelling. <laughs> and then after and this, make sure that there's no uh, you know things left left out. Hopefully for next week, uh, still got to do a lot of uh, hero shots for it, and then you know, actually write the script for the video. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it needs yeah. to be produced for this. Yeah, year. but of course the priority is always the layer, the guide. Your, your guys will have access to be able to download and purchase all the stuff. Um, yeah, the screens. The video, yeah, so, yeah, the screens should be in the shop uh, on Thursday. I think they actually released. Mm -hmm. uh, power Wednesday. boost is already is already. Been, already got the power boost one hundred one thousand C. Yeah. yeah, they've already and picked one up. Of course, the very awesome new uh, screen that we got, the two point. 2.4 inch 5TT. All right. 
Pedro, you have also been working on guides. You've got two guides here. This is the first guide. Yeah, so this is for this week's episode, uh, Link's Wooden Sword. Um, just takes you some uh, through some of the techniques of uh, printing in bamboo and then putting the um, just prop assembly, together, right? Yeah, this is the assembly page, and then, and then you made three D stuff. Yeah. So all the files all are included photo. there. All of the uh, settings you need to know for um, printing in bamboo. Okay. And then because uh, we, I didn't want it to be so long, I made a separate uh, guide on how to stain yeah. all the bamboo filament. Since this is using real wood. You can do things that you couldn't do with, uh, you know, regular ABS or PLA plastic. You can't just put, you know, a staining on it, a right. wood stain, in fact, yeah. and do, you know, some of the cool grain um, patterns um, that you see in wood. So very cool, awesome techniques, and even um, other characteristics um, like drawing on it with a pen. You can make like a custom, you know, money doll, and then you know, <laughs> sort of paint. Or draw on it like that. Know. You can't really do that with uh, ABS without you know having to use like acrylic paint or yeah. something like that. So lots of cool characteristics that you can do with um, bamboo filament. It's one of those filaments where it was like much like Ninja Flex. We didn't know what to do with it for a while. We've had you know wooden filament since you know I think like 2013, like, yeah. yeah, or even earlier. It was the than first that. exotic kind of. Um, Material that we've messed with. Yeah, it was like, the oh. laywood. Yeah. yeah, we just didn't really know what to do with it, and then you know, it just hit us when we were looking at one of your uh, corgs when you were making some music the other day. It's you know, it has so many different types of materials around. You have wood, you have the plastic, you have like the rubber, mm -hmm. you have like glass. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's really cool to give us some to ideas. With yeah, different filaments and then the processing. You talked a lot about processing um, when you were doing copper. And this is just another one of those, like when you're doing uh, different materials, you want to try to go the extra mile and do the processing because the comparison it is all about the, the processing now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely let us know in the comments below if there's a project that would involve wood, copper, bronze, Ninja, Ninja Flex, Flex yeah. uh, like transparent stuff like the, the ember can do, like glass. Yeah. Um, that would be a pretty cool project to okay. cobble every single type of material that's out there. So we have bamboo in the shop, right? Yeah, go ahead and check so out Bamboo check in out, the store. Uh, get yourself a, a, a discount, I think. Use the coupon code link. Uh, save you some monies on um, 3D printing accessories, printers, and of course, electronic um, accessories to finish up and bring your project to life. Cool. OK, with that, um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how we put together the sword, huh? Yes. Particularly, take I wanted to take a, take a look at the, the blade. Can you show us the blade tip real quick while I get this going? The blade tip is. Um, it's kind of a, a, diffi a different uh, sort of approach to, to modeling it. I, it was a little bit challenging, like how do I make that type of, because this is the, the type of diamond type shape that, uh, that we wanted to make, and it's kind of hard. So here's what we did, right? Let's take a look at the CAD now. So I started off with um, just a sketch, right? Like a spacing, uh, sort of a pentagon shape, and then this line here in the middle. And we're gonna use that line so that we can like uh, uh, mirror things, and so it's exactly in the center of it. So once you have your sort of measurements figured out, how thick you want your sword and the overall base of it, you just extrude it out. So I extruded out to like 50 mil here. And then um, the next thing we want to do is create that shape. So what I had to do is actually cut out that V shape. So cut it out. So I used a box, just a regular primitive box, 20 by 20, um, uh, to cut it. So here's what you can do. Here's, if you hit Y or X or Z on the keyboard, it'll actually rotate it by 45 degrees. So I hit Y on the keyboard. That was able to make it so that it, it, it uh, rotates it down. And then I just moved it down so that it intersects with the shape. So that if you subtract the two shapes, look at these, these, uh, these, these surfaces that you get. So what I'll do is with these surfaces, I can project a sketch and then um, create an, uh, a duplicate of it and then lock between it. So here's what we'll do. We'll come over here, we'll project the sketch, and then we'll have to click on the edge that we want, the surface that we want, hit OK. And that creates our uh, projected sketch. When you copy and paste it, you uh, are presented with the, the handler, and if you hit uh, Start Reorient, you can uh, roll over uh, edges and, and change the sort of anchor point of, of, the, of the handler. So you got to hit Stop uh, Reorient it when you're done uh, moving it. Otherwise, it'll just be moving it around. So now I can rotate it um, so it's straight up so that I have two, uh, two sketches now, and now I can lock between the two. So to lock between the two, you have to select both, holding down uh, Shift. And then we can come over here and then hit loft. And that'll create our first shape. Make sure you change that from merge to new solid. It tends to merge with it. You want to have it as a new solid so that we can 
uh, select it, and then um, and then marry it in this case. So I have it selected now. I'll come up uh, to mirror, and then change to the mirror plane, and then select that edge that, that we were talking about, that one there. And that way, I can quickly make a duplicate, and, mer and it's all merged um, to that piece. So now you'll see we got that shape we want, but it's not exactly as sharp like we want it. So the easy thing you can do is you can hit K on your keyboard, the letter K, and then when you roll over edges, you can you can manipulate them, you can tweak them. That's what the K is for, for tweak. So now that I have it selected, and I have my little manipulator, I'll just rotate it so that it's straight up. So it was a negative 25 degrees. And now I can just pull it up. And then it'll dynamically sort of reshape it for me. And now I have this awesome uh, sword tip, the blade. Blade tip. <laughs> Very yeah. different approach um, to making it because uh, just you know to get those couple of steps yeah, in there to get those uh, sketches you really have to kind of cut away at it to make it so it's a little bit like uh, a little workaround but um, to do it in in a, in a software package like Maya it's actually a lot more simpler so you can add subdivisions right in there. Right? Oh my God, yeah, you just grab the vertices and yeah. just pull those out. Um, the wanted a be able to do this in 1, 2, 3D so you know, everybody can easily modify this. Right. We know it doesn't have Maya. So. Yeah. No, yeah, it's a good approach. And then, of course, one of the last things you could do, you can apply a fillet to the top edge there. But you want to be careful. You definitely want to save your product or your, your project before doing this because with all 3D CAD packages, the wrong step. Any, <laughs> the wrong step, and software, man, I yeah. crashed it. And I typed in, oops. Yeah, one of our engineers were asking, how do you get around mm. Premiere crashing all the time? Oh, yeah, how you? have you? to have a <laughs> trigger, finger, trigger yeah. save finger oh, yeah. because it, it crashes, it crashes every, quite a bit. After every, yeah. OK, so that is up on the uh, Adafruit learning system. You can download the STLs in the 123X file, right? Yeah, so okay. you can definitely um, edit this if you have a printer bot. Uh, simple, uh, metal simple. You can you know, adjust to ha how, where it's all chopped up. And all of these sketches are in there if you want to recreate some of those blade tips as well. Um, if you actually want to modify the handle for this, I uh, actually made it a little bit too big, I think. You, so you can make it, you know, a little like bit it. smaller if you have smaller hands or whatever. Sure. So yeah, all the all the, uh, all the sketches, sketches are in there if you want to yeah. have a look at how a lot of these things are created. Cool. This is just one of the coolest tips I think for making the blade tip. Uh, oh, yeah. It probably would have been easier on like in something like Fusion 360. Um, oh, probably yeah. But yeah, you do everybody loves one two three D. Um, maybe if they enable the local storage inside uh -huh. Fusion, a lot of people, more people would use it. Is that a suggestion? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, well, let's go ahead and jump in uh, to news now. Let's get to answer some news. So we got a couple questions here uh, this week. Let's start off with this one from M A Tazi. Why do you builders never put the shop links in the freaking description? Besides that, awesome mod. Keep going. Yeah. yeah so sure. the that description is in every single video. It it's learn.adafruit.com. We yeah. just don't want to mess up you know there's already a lot of info inside the description we didn't want to clutter it up with like every sure. single product description and yeah. product link we, and um, we make the learning system um, more enticing to purchase because all the all the all the featured products are up on the sidebar you get the prices there and there's even a button that says buy all or add all to cart so you can get a good idea of how much the project is going to cost and then from there you can you know remove them from your cart that's the best way we can come up with um, instead of having shop links everywhere, um, especially when you click on the, the, the link, the learning, it's just one link, you get presented with all the components. They're all, level, they're all listed there. And they look really What good. I like about that, too, is that once you go there, um, there's like related projects using mm -hmm. those components. Oh, yeah. So oh, maybe yeah. we've made something already that you didn't even think about sure. that you already made. And you can yeah. quickly see the product description for that and the uses. Maybe there's like, you know, additional cable that you didn't even think about that you needed. Sure. So it's uh, very helpful to have everything right there in one place. Definitely check out. Yeah. For every video, learn at Yeah, it's all, in, it's all, it's all. In, it's, we always say it's in the link in the description below, and it always is. It's always there. So yeah. just and be then, sure to click on the learning. Yeah, link. it might not look like a shop link, but it's totally a shop link. Yeah. So even with uh, products that we don't carry, we actually put links to things we don't carry, like you know, oh, additional yeah, screws, and, screws and, and things like yeah. that, or you know, ancillary type sure, uh, accessories tools. that you need. Yeah, it's all inside the wood stains. Yeah, inside the. Uh, a description for okay. the inside the learning gag. Well, good question, either way, because we, we just want to talk about that a little bit about that. Okay. Next, uh, this one's from Adian. What's up, man? He's asking, would you ever do some dual extruder and multi material projects? For example, a phone case with certain parts made of Ninja Flex and other parts made of PLA. I've been trying some stuff like that lately, and I'd like to see your take on it. Pedro, this is a good one because you actually 
did a very, very cool project. So our first uh, premiere of the 3D Hangout show, oh, yeah, that's right. um, we, uh, that week's project was a DIY sort of VR headset. And the really cool thing is that you use NinjaFlex and PLA, you fuse them together. You didn't glue them together. You use the change filament option, which is available in a couple uh, you know, firmwares. I, I think um, MakerBot has it built in. I think Sailfish has it as well. Yeah. And so does the Merlin firmware on the Lulzbot printers. They have that option as well. So um, you can use that instead of having to use uh, dual extruders. Now, you've had a dual extruder. You've done a couple tests before. Um, and it's actually very difficult. Um, it's, um, it involves a lot of uh, setup time, right? So, yeah. uh, but a good, a good example of somebody really using it really well, the dual extrusion and dual material, James Bruton. Um, definitely like on his Alien Xenomorph project, like most of his parts are Ninja Flex for, for, for the joints that can move and the rest are rigid parts. So like his tail or some of the rib cage elements. There's a lot of parts um, that, uh, that he used that very same technique. And I like his videos because he goes through sort of all the nitty gritty details, fill infill densities using slicer, and how to set it up really to make it so that these parts uh, will print properly. Yeah, um, lots of properties to go over. I would say it probably works better with big parts instead of these little parts and things, because then you start oh, yeah. getting that, um, that oozing. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've made uh, iPhone cases with like having PLA in the middle and it's surrounded by Ninja yeah, Flex. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it works. It's yeah. just not, you know, not as practical as we'd want it. Sure, um, there's some tests too, like, like uh, Design Make Teach, Josh, Joshua. He, uh, he made this big, like a foldable block where um, yeah. the, the first layer is, is Ninja Flex and the second layer is PLA. Um, and then that way you can fold up this, this sort of rigid thing, but mm -hmm. it has foldable joints. So it's yeah. really cool. Again, it's just changing the filament. It's not using a dual extruder. Yeah. And, then, and then it also comes down to like, um, what can we actually invest in for time? Mm, you know, we don't sell <laughs> dual, ext yeah. you know, dual head extruders. Right. Um, but multi-materials and printing them, you don't need, sometimes you don't need it. And now with the, even with this new uh, product called the Mosaic, I think that is a really interesting thing. It's yeah, a no machine dual. that can mix uh, different materials and colors on the fly, and um, that's really interesting. It's already funded too, so if, if we if hope they, they get to their backers, if they quickly fulfill their so backers, we we're definitely going to test it out and perhaps even ask them if they, they want distributors because we would love to sell that thing. That's yeah, a really so cool approach. Definitely coming up in the future. Um, we have been eyeing this for a while. Yeah, it's just yeah. that we personally don't, you know, we don't sell any yeah. anything that we can. You know, that, that's how we get paid. Yeah. By but fusing, <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of I think work that needs to be done in testing. Like, will PLA fuse with copper? You know, will will NinjaFlex fuse with copper? So those are things that uh, that you folks are have to figure out because we're 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 figuring things out too as well. Yeah. But uh, at least you know that NinjaFlex and PLA works really well. ABS like, too. We, we show like it's bonded very well, like the way it printed. Yeah. And you can't even gold. tell too where it starts until you oh, like feel black. it. Yeah. yeah, they're both black. So, really yeah, so cool. definitely check out that. It is the, um, yeah. was it the we'll custom the heads up display. Yeah, very cool project. And if you want to look at you know more um, parts of it, check out the Hangout show too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we, we show it off a lot more there too. Yeah, that's right. Layer that's by layer and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Cool. Let's check that Duh. out. Thanks for the question, Adian. Keep it up, man. Next up, this one's from Jeffrey. A tour of your would be cool since you have a lot of experience with three different 3D printers. What features would you include to create your optimal or dream printer? Peace. Pedro, this one's you, man. I, it's, it's hard for me because like... I want enclosed. I want dual extruders, heated bed, um, high temperature nozzle. How, how, what kind of bed is your, is your favorite? Kind of I, I like the type A sort of style. Heated? So he, if, if it was heated, enclosed, um, I know like the side panels are set up so you can enclose it on, on the sides, the yeah. front, and then get like a hood for the top. So you're thinking like maybe a, a, a MakerBot Z18 without the, the With MakerBot the nozzle. Yeah, <laughs> without the smart extruder, something that's tall, something that's, you know, because yeah. As you've seen, the having a big area for doing cosplay and stuff, we could never do that until you know, yeah. we got a big uh, print area. Yeah. So I want to bed, dual extruder. Um, what kind of leveling would you like? A Z probe. It could it or? could be you know you it's it could just have knobs. Leveling. I'm not too much of a fan of the auto leveling stuff. With the Z probe. Um, no. With the Z probe. Yeah. No, no, no. That's probably the worst. I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that would be my ideal printer, right? Okay. There. Yeah. For me, like I, I I'm really excited about. Um, products like the mosaic really where it's like it just well, adds on that's to more your of a, yeah that's an accessory yeah 
Well, it's uh, a really powerful one. Oh so my god, can, yeah. yeah it's, it's, seeing it switch between filaments like that is pretty gnar. Mm -hmm. Very, very useful. Well, imagine having two. We'll see two. how the software is. Imagine though. having you... two, like a dual extruder with each one having a mosaic on it. That's eight. <laughs> that's eight different filaments. <laughs> for printing there rainbows go, all man. day, man. Printing rainbows. <laughs> okay, next up. Okay, so yeah, that's that's a tough one for me, but Pedro, you got a pretty good idea. Okay, next one. This is from David. Uh, two questions. Number one, would like to video. see the tour of your uh, of your house setup. Okay, we're working on that one. A bit disappointed. There was no mention of the closure of the MakerBot stores um, and, and layoffs, unfortunately, announced in the news section as that to be very newsworthy in the realm of 3D printing. Well, you know what? We have a video. We yes, went to the MakerBot store on the second day of its opening. And uh, we visited the store, and this is before we knew anything about Adafruit or DIY Electronics. <laughs> My God, yeah, it's so funny how we got into this. Yeah, yeah so, so there's you know Annalise from uh, MakerBot TV, which was you know a giant inspiration. Oh man, you know, I love how Makerbot to produce TV. content. Annalise was so awesome. We wanted to be featured on that so bad. I know. <laughs> we really, we and really. Now here we are with our own show. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, there was Todd Blatt there showing you how to use Mesh Mixer. We didn't even know about Mesh Mixer. No I mean, way, this yeah. was it was like beta Mesh Mixer. Yeah, this I don't was even three years ago. Autodesk owned it yet oh my so god yeah it was yeah. very very cool to be in new york and and feel the vibe and maker fair that was that maker fair mm -hmm. event and and it was just about the time where we didn't know that they were on the down slope um it really felt like i it mean was we've heard we, we heard it from you know some of the people because the were fifth there gen wasn't there yet it was the rep 2 that was the latest and greatest that's when it was starting to change when and things are starting to change we've been at like a lot of startup companies where we you know the rot starts setting in where you know all the you know bozos are you know sort of become Mar in yeah, charge of sales anything. And, and marketing becomes the most priority yeah and, and that's you know right then that's when it starts all going downhill from there sure. you start looking for a new job then um but, but yeah. it was a pretty cool store they had you know they sold parts they sold um printers of course filament and it was just really cool to come in there and see you know printers working away this is like the first store ever uh, first 3D printer store ever. Yeah, it was. But it's not the last. There's there's plenty more out there from different people, different companies, and things. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, you know it's very unfortunate that the store had to close. Yeah, and even and more unfortunate, like the numbers are down, like this, like forty percent down in revenue or really? something like that. Well, like so eighteen or something. Well, whatever it is, it, yeah, it's it's going down. I mean, whatever. It is, it, there's plenty of other um, printer manufacturers of you know. Um, took over, you know, sure. we're sort of carrying the torch, torch now, so, uh, okay. yeah, unfortunate, but yeah, uh, as Lamar and Phil have said, the, they're always hiring engineers, yeah, we already have a couple Adafruit's of always hiring. Yeah, we actually have a couple of ex uh, maker botters, maker bot bodies, mm -hmm. maker bot employees, very, very good, good people, very, very talented people, yeah. so I'm sure you folks will find. End of an era for that, but um, uh, pretty cool to be part of it when, uh, when, when it was, was around. There, yeah. Yeah. And you, I, I missed the photo. You have a photo of you and Bree when you first met him. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so. it's on there. It's on somewhere. Instagram somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump back to the question since we took a little bit of a round trip to news. If I can pull it up. I think I can pull it up. Here we go. All right. Let's go ahead and check out the next question. This is the last question. This, this is one. The can CNC, uh, the ginormous uh, Delta 3 printer. Oh, the VIP, the vanilla ice printer. Great, can you print something like a long pipe? So that, actually what they're using it for is to print these ginormous like columns for That's kind of like, like a some of the accessories. Something yeah. big, it's a, so it's it's like a cylindrical, fancy pipe. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> cylindrical object. Um, but if you're talking about like water pipes and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if it'd be watertight. You would want to seal it or something. Yeah, you don't have to seal yeah. it, but nope, that's what they're using it for. Some cool turtle um, casings and oh, accessories. Oh, really? Like the, the turtle uh, tunnels? Yeah, of course they're doing a Ninja Mario Turtle. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mario tunnels would be pretty cool with that, yeah. yeah. So, know, yeah. cool, that's it for this week's question. If you want us to answer your questions, all you have to do is ask them away on YouTube. So we'll collect them together and bring them here and answer them. Yep, yep. Cool, thank you guys for your questions. And now we're going to jump into the news section of the show. This one, very, very cool. First up, this is a very cool upgrade to our original Pie Girl project. This is very cool. This was, uh, I found this on Monday. Thingiverse tweeted out, called it a Monday make. And I was just very, very impressed by this, this remix. This um, is exactly what we want you guys to do. Grab. This doesn't look 3D printed. It looks like it was modified. Again, it's all about it the post-processing now. It absolutely is. Dual color here. Um, 
a lot of upgrades. This is the biggest upgrade, really, is to, is to make your own um, controller-type mounting board. So he's using um, tactile switches instead of using the, uh, the elastomers and, the, and cutting the traces. It's actually a pain it's a in little, the butt. a little messy there. Very yeah. messy. This is way better. Um, and then he, he even added a speaker, an amplifier, and, a, and a, an audio jack. Pretty darn cool. Can you tell me more about the project, Pedro? Yeah, so this was designed by Tree Spirit. Um, Tree as, Spirit. So as you I'll said, he, uh, he added two more buttons on the front and actually uh, two more on the back as so he's well. he's got L and R, and look how wonderful those, um, yeah, that's, those labels look. Like. And the HDMI port in the back there, that's freaking yeah. awesome. A really good way to do it, yeah. yeah. As you said, speaker, uh, headphone jack, and it's printed in four parts. Uh, it's sanded and painted. Yeah, <laughs> sanded and painted. Really cool uh, post-processing techniques. Four in that. parts? I don't. I don't see any seams anywhere. Oh, that's right. It's like this was inside. Part, yeah, yeah, the inside parts and stuff. So yeah, that is definitely what we want to see. You guys uh, improve our projects and make them work for you. Mm -hmm. Figure out some design challenges. I'm sure you know. Uh, there's there's a, there's still a lot of improvement and stuff. So very, very cool to see. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, if we did giveaways, I would definitely give away uh, all the parts for the brand new Pocket Game Pie that yeah, we're, yeah, that you're working on. we're working on stuff. So. We know that he'll actually do something with it, but sure. yeah, be on the lookout for the uh, the new uh, Pocket Pie. Tiny Pocket yeah. Pie. Um, yeah, one last thing I wanted to say about it, but it's escaping my head now. <laughs> oh, um, it's, so he didn't, he, he didn't share his files. People are people in the comments are really asking, "Hey, can you upload your STLs? Can you make it a proper?" He said he's working on it. Can, yeah. you, can you put the, some documentation together? Yeah, if you if you're watching, I definitely encourage you to do so. A lot of people will be benefited for it. So check that out. And if you um, if you if you'd like, you can share your project with us on our uh, Wednesday show and tell show. That would be really cool to have have you on the show. So yeah, it's always open for for you guys. So. Check it out. It's on Thingiverse. Um, very yeah, cool. Very cool. Next, Next up, OpenRC Quad. This is oh, yeah. an OpenRC Quad. This, this is one is of the finest looking quads that I've seen on Thingiverse. Yeah, they're always like boxy or yeah. sort of you know chunky yeah. looking. This is designed in Sweden by Daniel Noré, which is um, he's the author of Open R the OpenRC project and the Open Railroad project. Wow. He's actually won some awards. Um, so. Very cool design here. I really love the way that everything's all nice and curvy, nice and modern looking. And it doesn't look like a you know tiny little quad. It looks like some big um, yeah. propellers. Wasn't it optimized that. sort of for weight? And like, how, how did you? Yeah, how so um, the main goal here was uh, creating parts uh, with strong material, thin walls, low infill, all to keep the weight down. And as we've seen uh, in a future project, uh, the drone video, it's, uh, we're printing props we're using different materials to find out what is the most, you know, durable while weighing lit less, you know, like, and withstanding a lot of crashes. Yeah. So, um, very cool uh, sort of way to approach the, uh, the type of problem, um, figure out what materials are going to be the lightest, oh, yeah. and, you know, hold Yeah, up. drones and, 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 and specific drone accessories and mounts, that's one of the best ways to test uh, durability on these high strength materials. Yeah, because every time we hear about, you know, somebody talking about materials or, you know, new properties yeah. of something, they always print practice. a freaking squirrel. They never make something that, you know. Although we like squirrels, it, it would be nice if... That uh, doesn't show, you know, it just shows that it prints. It doesn't show, sure, you know, yeah. any other attributes. Same right. thing with, like, you know, just making, like, a, a a bracelet or something. That's not really showing us any, you know. No, it doesn't. Sure, you could stretch, you could stretch it and everything, it. but, I mean, hey, you know, how about an actual use? Yeah, yeah a bracelet. <laughs> Anyway, it's a really, really cool approach. Um, you can download the files on Thingiverse. And All the files are available to download. The OpenRC project is a very active Google Plus community. No? Yeah, check that out. OK. Next up, this one's very, very cool. We like pro cosplay props. We like big cosplay props even better when it's printed in copper, copper and, and bronze. bronze. Can you guess what this is, folks? Oh, yeah, you know what it is. <laughs> so tell me about this. Yeah, so uh, ColorFab posted about this. Um, that mass portal actually, uh, makers of Delta printers actually uh, so printed So printing out. manufacturer printed this out in copper and bronze fill? Yeah, so they just wanted to show the techniques and I guess the... Um, Their massive build volume. <laughs> massive build volume and of course the printing quality out of this. It's they like, printed, like 100 microns. Uh, they used a uh, nail filer and it took about four hours to get the polished look out of this Four hours of, of, of filing nail. Yeah, so they printed this on their Faro Delta printer which is a... Uh, 320 by 310 by 630 uh, millimeters tall. So pretty this big. is pretty damn big. 
um, with a big price tag too. It's about thirty-two hundred dollars, but pretty cool quality that you can get out of this. Wish they had uh, screenshots yeah, of the printer they're itself. They're a manufacturer from Latvia, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, so it's a one point seven five millimeter um, extruder. Uh, it goes up to three hundred C. Wow, uh, that's heated a bed. It's really hot. Um, yeah, pretty cool uh, quality that you're, right, uh, you're able to get out of that. Yeah. And I really like the finishing job on there. We haven't tried using a nail filer no to way. get that down. It just, it just looks too good. Yeah, some people are saying that yeah, maybe it was tumbled, but they're this, not telling us the whole story. Yeah, that's not the look that we got when we get tum when we mm. got it tumbled. Mm. Um, yeah, this is the look that we get when you, when you're sanding it down. I mean, you can really see in this photo like there's almost a bit of like. You know, when you look oh, at copper and you yeah. get this sort of different rainbow or something, mm -hmm. like you like the more effect, pink, from a bit Marlboro. of green in there. The lighting has changed. Very, very cool. Uh, um, you know, we're seeing more and more very cool projects being made with copper and metal filaments and then polishing them to just an absolute like polish, man. Look at this finish. Again, all about process processing. Yeah. Is this available on Thingiverse? Probably. Well, this right? is available on Thingiverse. Okay. Uh, it's one of the uh, Iron Man models that's been out there for a while. I think we even printed this. Oh, that one up there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a pretty cool model, check it out. Um, I think it has a cool little mechanism that like opens up. Yeah. You print one yourself, scale it down to fit your bed. Very cool. Next up, talking about big printers. Um, Nate from Type A Machines uh, had a little bit of inspiration uh -oh. um, over the weekend. Yeah, this is talking safe about for work. Big. We swear this is safe for work, it's just a shark. Talking about big printers. Um, you know, it's a little funny, you know, a little skit on, you know. It just really shows how, how uh, you know, printing big sort of, um, you know, the benefits are pretty big. You get really big parts, I guess, is, is the simplest way to say it. But, uh, yeah, they printed bricks and they made you a wall. Build like, walls and Depending buildings. on what you want to do and how much time you want to put, you can build freaking walls. Um, you know, giant cosplay props again and even giant prototypes. So, like, this giant... Um, it's really about making life-sized objects. You know, sure, it's, yeah. like it's really cool. Like when wear. you first get your printer, and you're like, "Oh my god, this thing actually works." But yeah. then after a while, you know, that's when you start making it, start making things that you know are replacing items in the real world. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, they can sometimes get a little bit bigger. So it definitely helps having you know not to have to slice um, things up into tiny little bits to fit on your bed. Yeah. So you actually have a tip uh, on printing. Like, yeah, you can print big, but some things to look out for, man. You gotta be ready for it. You gotta have the right filament spool. Yeah, so, so they released a new uh, filament spool design uh, not too long ago. Um, one of the things they, though, they, they forgot to do with it is since um, you know you're printing such big things, a lot of people usually um, get you know the you know the one kilogram sort of spool. Right. Um, but that's just not gonna cut it when you're printing such you know big objects. Yeah, so, so you gotta get yourself like the five pound um, sort of spool. And I just did a little update on their uh, spoolment hol holder so that it can just fit up on there. Yeah, and it's just mounted onto the Type-A? Yeah, so this just the mounts top. onto the top of the Type-A. Oh, cool. uh, I think it's like 3M screws that come with it. Oh, okay. It's a little bit longer, and you just screw all that on the top. But a definite um, accessory that you need for... Yeah, if you're pretty uh, the, big and, and a You can need a 5-pounder, yeah, because yeah, you're going to run out. You can pick up a 5-pounder from Ulti Machine, which is our favorite uh, brand of, of filament. So. Yeah, that's where we get all of our... Um, the PLA stuff from right. Do they also have three mil? Yeah, you can get a three millimeter. Uh, One seven five is what we carry. Um, another, another thing too that you, um, if any of the customers have gotten the Type A, sure. Um, the X uh, X and Y cables were rated for about a million moves. No but way. if you're printing such big things all the time, you're every gonna week, didn't... you're gonna blow right past that. So. Um, they are offering new cables for anybody who might have gotten, you know, crimped cables on that. So um, definitely let their support know if you were affected by this once you get to a million moves. The oh, new wow. cables that they have, though, um, in production now, I, I think they're rated for about 10 million uh, moves or more. 10 million? But, okay. yeah, if you're printing, you know, life-size wearables, like, you know, it was just showing yeah, that, that flipper. Or, or, yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to need... Uh, <laughs> You're probably going to get to the million moves pretty quick. Yeah. And then again, all kidding aside, uh, the things that he's shown here, like, you know, being able to prototype, you know, like a helmet or, sure, man, or like deal. wearable things that you're going to, you know, that need to be big. <laughs> it definitely helps <laughs> to have a bigger print area. Yeah. And it's just a cool tip. Uh, you know, get your, uh, if you're going to print big, make sure you've got uh, the proper stuff to do it. So a big spool. A big spool, nice yeah. holder, and of course, uh, updated cable. If you want to get 10% off, you totally can on the Type A machine. That's right. Get 10% off on the Ninja Flex, the filament. 
any of the accessories that we have for all 3D printing accessories. And of course, electronics. Use discount code LINK during checkout. Expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. It doesn't That's work right. on... Um, Gift certificates or... Software. Eagle CAD. Yeah. Alrighty, next up, cool project update from Mr. James Bruton from xrobots.co.uk. This oh, yeah. is what we've been waiting for right here if you skip to The that. big guns. Boom. I so think a couple we, months ago? Or I no, think it, like in December, I designed uh, or I worked with Bruton on coming up with a cool Unibeam design for the Hulkbuster. That's right. We wanted to get more into cosplay and stuff, so we reached out to Bruton because we're such a big fan. We always watch all this stuff. And we're like, dude, we could totally help uh, design a part, collaborate. And, and we even collaborated with Phil B, who wrote this amazing demo sketch uh, for, for um, the Unibeam. Yeah, so his some of the um, inspiration for this was he wanted something like the um, with the gravity room oh, from, from Event, Event Horizon. Horizon. It if, looks a, a lot like Mayan type. Yeah, I think a lot of the um, architecture and the design that was in the room was based off of like sort of Mayan okay. sort of um, you know designs. So incorporated that into you know the the whole uni beam you know sort of backdrop of that, yeah. and you could see the whole layer by layer and even the um, the episode for that oh, if you search right. in the YouTube. It's multi layered, so it's like stacked like different rings. Yeah. What kind of rings do you got in there? So we have a twenty four um, neopixel ring and a sixteen uh, neopixel ring on there. I wanted to put the sixty on there. Oh, it it would have right. been like. You just as big as the outer rim of that. You also have single neopixels, like sewable neopixels, I think? Yeah, we have single neopixels so they snap on the inside. Place. Yeah, definitely check out the layer by layer and the, yeah. um, the hangout video. And check out the demo. There. Check out Philby's demo code. This is amazing. If you're looking for like some crazy math neopixel code, there you go. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, again, um, very awesome code button, from right? Philby. So yeah. you can like, fire off different modes. What kind of modes does it have again? Like, we have like a disco mode, we have different <laughs> color modes, and then the fire mode, which sort of like fire, sort of yeah. builds up and then just you know, sort of unleashes this bright glow, yeah, this of sort of white. Pulse. Yeah. Yeah. So a very cool project, a great collaboration. This looks amazing on there. It's really awesome, yeah. It's like the, the cool little panels that move out. I mean, he's going to have so many electronics and, yeah. you know, servos that I think are moving he's gonna put everything a dome around. Over it or something, right? Like a dome of some sort. Yeah, so very cool. He's got, it's running a Gemma. He's going to hook that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the coolest thing there. Oh. Boom. Very cool. So um, if coming you, together, yeah. uh, ginormous build. I think it's like part 30, 30 something. 30. <laughs> Not just thirty, yeah. So very, very be cool. on the lookout for that. Yeah, how everything opens yeah, up there. There's gonna be a lot going on here. So very cool. Every week, James Rude cutting it up, making amazing projects. Every Tuesday and Friday, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Okay. All right. Next up, we have uh, restoring anti cameras. Restoring anti cameras. This is so using cool. 3D printing. This is this is a very cool one. So this is from Shawnee Union. Um, he actually asked a couple questions um, on our Laravel Lair videos, and um, one of them was how to make replacement parts. So I put together a video on how to how to how to go about making a replacement part, and he took that idea, or really the, the techniques of how to do it. And he said, I want to make replacement parts for my antique camera. So there's actually a thing where a lot of people uh, try to restore uh, these, these old antique cameras and they sort of go like, they go a thrift hopping where they try to find parts and then and older parts and try to mesh them together. With 3D printing, you could just create a whole new part and make it new again. So this is really cool. So, so Sean goes through um, sort of his design iteration. So cool thing is that he doesn't have a 3D printer. He went to a library, a local library, and was able to get access to one and then worked and, and, and went back and forth and made the, the, the sort of tweaks that he had to. So um, a lot of design iteration, a lot of learning that went in here. Even though it's a, sort of a simple part, it's a great project to, to learn about um, remaking parts, uh, printing them, tolerances, and then just nailing how a workflow. How small can you for, make something? Of course, yeah. Like how far what are the limits? Yeah, be? so he like made it too thin, then you made it too thick. It's too short. So he, uh, he followed uh, the tutorial I put together, um, a couple of them, and, and um, the main takeaway was to design and model the part itself. So he measured it using calipers, and then he remade it in 123D so that he had a better um, visual representation of what you were modeling. So you model around the part that you make. So very, very cool. Um, and here's this the final exactly one. It actually, actually pops open. Yeah, it actually pops open. The hinge actually works now. And you know this this uh, project makes me think of a lot of cool different things. Like maybe we want to put a Raspberry Pi in there and make just the components in there, make it look on the ex you know on the exterior it looks like a an antique thing, but on the interior it's all these new components and all these custom 
3D printed things to make it work. So I think it's a really cool project. Um, definitely check out uh, Shawnee Union on YouTube. He's hopefully going to be making more videos. It's exactly the type yeah. of um, what we want people to do with all the stuff that we put out there. Go ahead, take it, make it your own. And of course, uh, just going to the library um, really speaks to the times we're in. Oh, yeah. um, you, you, did, you didn't go to Shapeways. You didn't no. go to you know 3D hubs. Go to the library. You yeah. get all the stuff there for free. Yeah. Um, it's uh, you know sort of like in, in the age that we're living in. You have it's part of being literate now. So you have to you know have to know how to read, do math, do you okay. know coding, make a website, do video production, do like. And now, how to design, how to measure stuff, and how to print things out. It's, uh, it's the times we're living in. You yeah, need to know cool. all of these yeah, things. I, I like the, the, the type of projects that, like, one question Combine inspires a, a tip, and then that tip inspires another project. And it's just sort of this, this sort of cool snowball thing. I like yeah. it. So next up, the last, next up, the na the last uh, sort of news piece is, um, you know, there's a big watch, some sort of watch thing. What's this watch? <laughs> yeah, so of course, um, I was thinking. Apple Watch. I think I was a minute late when trying to order the watch. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to get mine until like May, but of course, my wife is like getting here like as we speak. It's on, okay, so on route. We checked out, this was last Wednesday. It was a wearable Wednesday. We checked out, we, we went to the Apple store. We scheduled ourselves to, what we really wanted to do was we wanted to measure the watch that we can come up with some cool DIY projects for it. So yeah, it's kind of funny we showed up there. We didn't look at the UI. We came oh, in no. there with calipers. We came in there with a <laughs> measured. And we came in there to measure and get out. Yeah. <laughs> um, what we're thinking about is making some cool Ninja Flex um, wristbands because right now there's only a couple colors, and of course there's only one you know sort of style for the you know the yeah. the, the elastomer sort of wristbands. We that want they to have. make this type of stuff. We want to make yeah, like, very very cool stuff. Yeah, so, so of course we're gonna make some spiky things, and we've already made like sort of uh, you know your do own DIY sort of watches. So the uh, feeling on these sports bands are pretty you know pretty close, pretty close to Ninja to Flex and yeah. the Semi Flex, so pretty easy to make um, nice little uh, bands for that. And of course, uh, cool accessories that we're showing, like you know maybe some spikes, yeah. um, like uh, That's and an of course case that I'm testing, like, yeah, just, testing. just seeing the feel and seeing if how it's it feels. pretty close, yeah. yeah. And as we've already tested out with, you know, the watches that we've made before, it's, you know, excellent for, you know, doing runs and things like that. Yeah, um, it's good in tolerances, too. It's yeah, good. very good, especially the Ninja Flex stuff, yeah. or the Semi Flex. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how we are able to, you know, make the, the little clasp where the magnet parts are. Maybe mm -hmm. we don't even need it. We'll, we'll figure things out, but... Um, we think it's a it's a it's a neat project. I think uh, there's a lot of opportunity in Google Juice there as well. Since the Apple Watch, a lot of people want this Apple Watch thing. I think it'd be cool to have a, a 3D printed uh, wristband. And, and you know, if you look on Thingiverse, there's already 3D printed docks. So a lot of different design. Um, it's another thing too. On it. so yeah, I we sell the really cool. yeah we sell the parts to make you know your own wireless charging. Um, oh yeah, we sell the cheese. So. so we're gonna definitely try out the Qi chargers and see how well, how we can make our own. Maybe a really cool one. Maybe like a cute little Mac classic. You, you set it down mm -hmm. and it looks like a Mac classic. Something, yeah. I don't know. If you're into that, maybe. Let yeah, us I mean, know what you think. Yeah, um, I see a lot of wooden ones out there. Uh, we just got some bamboo stuff, so oh, yeah. you can easily reproduce some of those. Make a wooden make a wireless block. charger, yeah. So cool ideas. Let us know if you guys have any in the comments below. Of course, okay. like little like bike mounts and, you know. The cool thing, what was that one guy who does like the cool animated, you know, like sort of shirts? He was thinking like, oh, oh man, right. you can be like a pirate, you know, sort of patch that's like animated. <laughs> right. So lots of cool things for, you know, Cold watch Halloween. Or a, a uh, you know, a clock. Like Flav or simple Flav. bumpers. A Flav and Flav I, I, I watch clock. I like the Mac Mini sort of little dock. You like you that? Put that in. Yeah, we might make that. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. So. Uh, what, were we, what are we going to use it for? I mean... Oh yeah, obviously we're check the phones. Yeah, yeah or the the um, the prints for that. Yeah. A lot of times we can't get to our phone, is because we're you know on the printer. You know, important stuff's coming in, and we're just like I can't even get to my pocket because my hands are yeah. dirty, or you know, there's always something going on. I um, really want to use it for our prompter app. So we we uh, we worked on a teleprompter app for iPad that you probably don't know about because it's. It's one of those things we did like a couple of years ago, and it still holds up really, really cool. Um, I still get money yeah. going to the bank account. Yeah, <laughs> it pays for itself. You know, it's a really cool app. Um, maybe we'll share about it. I don't and know. But anyway, what I want to do with it is, since we do on-screen uh, camera uh, a lot, uh, it'd be nice to be able to control uh, our teleprompter with our watch or with a watch, a smart watch type of thing. Because if the phone is a little bit you know, clunky and stuff, it'd be really easy to just feel for uh, the, the digital crown and, and like, rip, you know, go backwards or something like that. Because 
you know, it's all about the convenience and stuff and figuring out, uh, you know, how to use it in your in your job and your workflow. I think. Yeah. So definitely. Okay, that's enough of the of the Apple Watch. We don't actually have it right now. But it's coming it, in like a it, couple hours. It right? should come in a couple hours. It's right. on route. <laughs> oh man, poor Brandy. She has to like wait because it's, it's like her watch. <laughs> Okay. I'm well, worried if it wasn't pink. <laughs> oh, so you're gonna go right away and make your 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 uh, your band and make yeah. it like black. It has to be Adafruit black. <laughs> All right. Well, if you folks want to pick up some stuff on the Adafruit shop, please do. Now is the time to do it. You can get 10% off discount, and when you do, you fund. All of the cool projects, libraries, demo sketches, all the stuff that Adafruit's doing, it is because of your purchases. Yeah, definitely. Don't pay full price. Yeah. Get 10% off. Use discount Strategic. code link. Expires it on 59. Stock up on some NinjaFlex. <laughs> Stock up on NinjaFlex. Get uh, yes. new printers. <laughs> and okay. of course, electronics for any future projects. That's going to be it for the show, guys. Before we go, we definitely want you to check out all the guides that we have on the Adafruit Learning System. If you want to learn more about Arduino, Raspberry Pi, we got a lot of guides up on there, and 3D printing as well. Yeah, check out learn.adafruit.com to get all of the step-by-step -step guides, circuit diagrams. If you would like to share your projects with Adafruit, you definitely could, and we encourage you to do so. That is, um, that is how we got our jobs. We, we made a project, and we came on the show and tell, and we showed, it off. we showed it off, and they liked it, and you keep doing it, and you'll work something out. Yeah. <laughs> 3D Thursday blog. That's every Thursday. Thursday. We have all of our posts that you shared about today on the blog. So you can check that out. And you can follow me, Pedro, and Adafruit on Instagram and Twitter. And we the post, versus. Yeah, and we post a lot of behind the scenes stuff there too. So with that, folks, that is the show. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys next week, yeah? All right, folks. Every Thursday. Happy Thursday. See you guys. See you.